But let's start off with this Tottenham update, looking at the last 24 hours of Tottenham news. And the first one excites me a lot. It goes by the name of Danny Olmo of RB Leipzig. The Mail reporting that Tottenham, Chelsea, Man United, Man City and Real Madrid are the clubs tracking RB Leipzig's Danny Olmo. The 25-year-old Spain international is continuing to excel at RB Leipzig and has a clause that becomes active this summer where he can leave for £52 million. Pounds. And I think um, that's a steal for someone like Danny Olmo. I mean, you think about the price for Brennan Johnson mm. and what was it a few million more and you can get someone like Danny Olmo yeah. um, obviously the sticking point would be we don't Spurs don't like paying release clauses because it means p to pay the release clauses all the money up front we like to play in installments and we don't like to just um, chuck a big what's a Poro's uh, release clause uh, I don't think it, uh, in, in the end it, uh, it, it was wasn't in the end but the yeah. price that we paid was the we loaned release him. clause yeah it was yeah. so we don't like to just activate a release clause like that um, unlike other clubs who, who are more uh, willing to do that. Um, so I don't know if that would affect the deal, but I love Danny Elmo. I think he's such a silky player. I look at him as like a, a bit of like a modern day Yossi Ben Ayun, like a little nimble player <laughs> who's really good in those half spaces. Just who's a such lot a good better. technical. Ben Ayun was a great player. Yeah, but Danny Elmo is world class player. I think Ben Ayun was brilliant. Anyway, it's a different, different discussion. But Danny, Danny Elmo is, uh, is brilliant. Um, I think he's great in international level as well. I think in the World Cup, he, he had a really uh, good tournament. Um, I'm always impressed when I see him for RB Leipzig. And as well, what's crucial is he's really versatile, can play on the wing, can play in the central positions also and potentially a false nine position as well you can play um such a clever player such a great technician i think it'd be fitting right in at spurs and either wing wings as well which is um great versatility to have for spurs in terms of when you're looking at the clubs that could be in, that are interested in him i mean chelsea i mean who knows if chelsea are going to spend big money on anyone this summer with the financial restrictions that they've got man united i mean if you judge it between tottenham and man united surely you go to tottenham above man united um looking at this current season and then you've got man city and real madrid are real madrid really going to spend 50 million on him when they've got Bellingham and they've got um, Mbappe coming in and all these and players. And they've got Chiumeni, they've got um, they've Valverde, they've got the midfield sorted as well. So yeah. like, they really don't so need I, him. I don't really see the Real Madrid one being a go. But Man City are the real danger here, probably. Yeah, I, I think he'd fit right in at City um, because of Pep Roulette, who'd get plenty of game time. Obviously, may, maybe they'll let go of, maybe Grealish will leave. Mm. Maybe uh, is Nunes going to stick around? But look, there's always rumours about um, Bernardo Silva. You know, yeah. He's always looking to leave. He would be a brilliant um, kind of replacement for Bernardo Silva. He would fit right in. I think, yeah, Man City, obviously, if they're really seriously interested. And also, the difference between City, us and City, and I would say probably Man United, is they're probably going to be more willing to just pump up, uh, stump up the ca all the cash up front yeah. and say, here, here's 52 million let's just sign him rather than Spurs like negotiating trying to get it down trying to pay in installments all this kind of stuff so I think if they're both those clubs are seriously interested I do find it hard to think Spurs will be able to um, get ahead of them but if we can convince him we're the right project I mean I'd love someone like Daniel Elmo at the club yeah you would think though like being at RB Leipzig his next move will be like a monstrous club because RB Leipzig is the kind of project club mm -hmm. and the move after that probably isn't to a Tottenham probably is to a Man City yeah, um, although Spurs are hopefully getting to the, into that conversation. Obviously not Man City, but like we're obviously a big club in the Premier League. So I think players um, do look at Tottenham as like a big step now rather than like 10 years ago when it wasn't as big a step. But um, obviously if Man City are involved, it's hard to compete with them. Next up, let's talk about Santiago Jimenez. Caught offside, very reputable source there. <laughs> says that Tottenham would like to beat the competition of Santiago Jimenez's uh, a signature the club have already made contact with the final star um, who was their number one target after Kane's exit and the Mexican is very much a top priority for the target of number nine position the 22 year old has been in fine form this time registering 24 goals and five assists in 35 games this season and Post Coglu side of course have alternative options on their transfer shortlist such as Dusan Blahovic, Jonathan David, Evan Ferguson and Ivan Toni and I also noted his alternative. That said, Spurs are confident of landing the final front man this season and talks are intensifying. I mean, I do find this one kind of hard to believe when we've got Sonny who's being um, deployed as the number nine. We've got Richarlison there. We've got Alejo Valiz out on loan as well. So I kind of feel like we're going to focus on wingers as opposed to number nine. Yeah, especially because he's going to be a, a large fee as well. So if we're kind of looking at him, 
he for for that kind of fee you'd have to think he'd be have to be a priority in the window for that to kind of deal to get done obviously he's a brilliant player i'm not i'm not surprised that Tottenham would be interested in bringing someone like him to spurs um even with sonny and richarlison here like he's would be a fantastic addition he's a brilliant striker um really good te technician and even though he's had a great season in holland what i really like about him as well is in the champions league when he played he made a big impact to there as well even though um final themselves didn't he he made a big impact so I think he's going to have a lot of interest around Europe, but whether Tottenham are the club to stump up the big fee for him, um, as you say, when we have two number nines who are both scoring goals right now, I think Tottenham are going to look to, if they're going to make a big signing, I think it'll probably be on the wing, and I don't see Tottenham making many big signings. The only way I can see this happening is if Richarlison does end up leaving. Let's say a big bid comes in for him from Saudi and, and, he, fa and he accepts to go there and stuff like that. That's the only way I see us bringing in number, number nine, but if everyone stays, then I just don't think this is a viable option. Um, next up, let's talk about Samuel Illing Jr. The Football Insider says that Tottenham, West Ham, Brighton and Everton are plotting moves to the Juventus star Samuel Illing Jr. Um, Illing Jr. is 20 years old, out of contract in the summer of 2025 at Serie A. Giants, who have reluctantly accepted that they may have to cash in on the versatile attacker to avoid losing him for free. Yeah, and that makes sense. Obviously, there's been rumoured a lot um, about Spurs being inter interested in him. Um, I for me, obviously, I don't know how much of an impact he's made at Juventus this season um, if he's playing regularly. Is he going to be a player we sign like completely ready to step in and be a, what, you know, one of the number one wingers at the club? Because that's the kind of level I'm looking at. If we're signing him plus another winger, then that's OK because he's a young and up-and-coming one and maybe he's one that can develop into a star. I don't think he's at that level at the moment. But I, I just hope that if we're, we're not signing him with a view of like he's going to be this winger that we're looking for because I yeah. don't know if he's at that level yet yeah I think that's absolutely spot on so if you bring in if you bring him in with someone like uh, a Nico Williams or um, who's the other man that we we're talking about on the right hand Rafinha side Rafinha or Rafinha exactly like if you bring him along with one of the other two then I think it's acceptable but then if it's just him you're talking about Levy up to his old tricks again yeah, I hope that's not the case. But maybe there's a deal. Maybe if we can get him on a good deal, that's something that, again, looking to the future, this could be a player who, who's comfortable on both wings and could be a real important player for us. Yeah, I'll be very much open to it for sure. Um, Ange Postacoglu has been speaking in his press conference regarding Kuti Romero. He brought you the news that Kuti uh, does want to expect, express the desire to go and play at the Olympics, which finishes just three days before the start of next season, which means he wouldn't have a pre-season, which means he would probably miss the first couple of games potentially of the new season and has been saying and he says yeah look with all those things the olympics is a little bit different issue because the clubs aren't obliged to release players certainly as a club we'll make sure there is a balance there my advice would be with the copper america and hopefully us gearing up for a big season rest would be the better policy and i think we can all get behind that Definitely, but it's interesting that he's been very clear on that because um, you'd expect with that kind of situation he would have to say, oh, I'll have to chat with Romero and then we'll, dis we'll discuss it. But he's made his position really clear. I think he should rest, basically. He could, and I think, obviously, he hasn't outright said that I'm not going to allow him to go, but he is definitely, I would say, more than a strong hint, like, oh, I'm going to suggest he doesn't go and he, and he rests. Now, could that cause some conflict between him and Romero? That could be an interesting situation because we know how Romero is a very headstrong kind of person he's a player who loves his country and he and has done a lot like he's done a lot even in this time at Spurs to be available for Argentina you just got, got to remember um, when was it a couple of years ago it was the World Cup no there was the World Cup but even before that if I remember rightly didn't he get arrested on the pitch or something because of oh, the COVID, the COVID yeah. situation mm. he travelled against the club's wishes to, yeah. to, to go to Argentina didn't he yeah. and the club told him not to go um, because of the whole uh, I can't remember what the situation was a lockdown situation we weren't uh, I think the Premier League player, um, the Premier League weren't allowing players to go to their international duties or something like that yeah I I can't remember exactly, but I do. I think him and La Celso both got like. But then they, they the went pitch, to the game, and they and then uh, they, the government all some they, they stormed the pitch, didn't they? The yeah. police or whatever, and uh, stopped the game. I think it was against Brazil. If I remember, I can't remember. But um, anyway, that goes to show. Anyway, I'm trying to say is the lengths he will go to to be available and play for his country. Now, if from Ange uh, turns around, and as Ange is saying. Spurs have no obligation to allow Romero for the Olympics to, to release him. Now, if Romero's uh, adamant he wants to play and I'm saying, I think um, we're not going to release you, 
could that cause a problem? I mean, with someone like Romero, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it does, to be honest. Yeah, look, there is a possibility of that. But, I mean, playing at the Copa America, just after winning the World Cup as well, he's got to realise that he's got responsibilities at Tottenham as well. Like, we're the ones that pay his wages, and he's also vice-captain here. It's not like just he's any player here at Tottenham. He's vice-captain, he's a role model, he's a leader, and he needs to assume those responsibilities as well as, as the ones for his countries as kind of equal importance, in my opinion. I agree. I mean, as a Spurs fan, I agree. But as if I'm going into Romero's head, and I, and you know how many, how often are you going to be uh, are, you, are you going to be able to play at the Olympics and try to win Olympic gold for your country, which is one of the highest honors you could earn? And if this is one of the only opportunities he has to do it, um, then for one summer, for, uh, not getting any rest, uh, I think I think personally, like that's a it's a foolish move. But maybe from his point of view, think he, he thinks I can handle it. I want to be available for my country, and if they don't let me go, then I'm not going to be happy. And do you do we want to? cause the sort of situation where he holds any resentment towards the club that is that is a it could be a tough situation i really hope it doesn't get to that i hope Ange just sits down with him and he kind of sees where Ange is coming from and he agrees but knowing romero and how stubborn and headstrong he can be i don't know i don't know if he'll cause a problem i hope not though yeah i hope not as well let's hope it just uh it's more of him trying to realise those uh, responsibilities that he does he have here at Tottenham and realise that next season could be a really big season for us and him missing the early parts of the season, not going on pre-season and stuff like that could actually be a detrimental effect. But if, if he does go to the Olympics and like, let's say he disagrees with Ange and Ange said, look, Ange says, look, I'm, I'm going to leave the decision to you. I want you to stay, but if you really want to go, I'm not going to stop you. What, what what do you think Spurs reactions uh, Spurs fans reaction will be to that if he ends up going to the Olympics misses maybe the, the first game is, of the I, season I, I can see like Ange Ange's stance being like that but I can't see Daniel Levy letting him go um, at all I think Daniel Levy will be very stubborn about it yeah but let's say they they leave the decision to Romero mm. I'm saying from Spurs fans point of view do you you know because there was a lot of discussion about does he care more about Argentina than Spurs look at him he's always making himself available for Argentina he missed the last what few weeks before the World Cup uh, essentially a rumour uh, um, the conspiracy was because he wanted to be fit for Argentina um, do you see Spurs fans holding that against him I think some will for sure. I think somewhere. I think it all depends on how it all plays out. I mean, if he goes and they go out early and he's back for preseason or whatever, then I think it'll be fine. But if it rolls over into the season and he misses preseason, he misses the first few games, maybe even more. Because if he's playing Cop America and Olympics back to back, he's going to need rest. You can't mm -hmm. just go straight into a, the hustle and bustle of the Premier League season week in, week out. He's going to need to take off at least two or three weeks at the start of the season. And then you've got international breaks coming in the in the start of the season next year. So it's going to start a whole disjointed uh, start of the season for Kuti Romero. And um, imagine he start it, it he would annoy miss, me massively. Imagine he misses the start of the season that makes himself available for international duty. Well, that's what will that, happen. That, that, will that, happen. that would be that then a lot of Spurs fans would get very angry, that yeah. kind of situation. And, and probably rightly so. Mm. Um, let's finish off talking about these comments from Ashley Phillips, where he's stating his ambitions next season for Tottenham. And he says... I hope from this loan that I can gain the trust from the Spurs coaches so I can push to starting and now, every now and again, maybe in the cup competitions. I can only thank Plymouth for letting me come down here and get minutes regularly. And then he goes on to say um, of his inspirations and he said that he's taken pieces from Romero and Van de Ven and tried to integrate those into his game this season. And um, in terms of Ashley Phillips getting minutes next season, I just can't see it with Dragosin uh, having come in. Like, obviously, with Romero and Van de Ven having the two starting spots, you would assume that Dragosin comes in and starts the cup games. So, I mean, where does that leave Ashley Phillips? I kind of thought before Dragosin came in that Ashley Phillips would come and maybe fight for a spot next year in the first team. But now Dragosin's here. I don't know. I, I, I question that. Especially with the rumours that Spurs are looking to sign another centre-back as well, um, a left-sided centre-back. That also will, again, limit his playtime. The only real... Um uh, time I can think he, I can see him playing is maybe the Carabao Cup if we decide to rest some players and maybe give him an opportunity there. It's interesting to hear, hear him say it that he that's what what his head is at in the moment. He wants to be back in the first team and maybe get some opportunities in the cup competitions and that's where his head is at. But I do think for his development maybe a, another loan deal is best, especially because he's still only 19. He's still uh, will will be 19 next season, um, so he's still very young. There's no rush to get him to the first team unless he's like really good enough and really like outstanding for a player of his age. Um, so I would that would that would be my at this point my advice to him is to try and get as much regular play time as possible and not be sitting on the bench and looking on as other players um, are getting opportunities especially 
players who are older than him and a bit more experienced and be resentful of that uh, situation. But if he's determined to do it and he thinks he's good enough to be getting opportunities, then I wish him all the best. But I, I think personally, I reckon that's probably what the club we're looking at as well. And judging by their actions, signing Dragushin and looking at another centre-back, it does point to me that they don't think he's ready at the moment. Yeah, but then you think about like the future going forward. Like, how can Ash, how can he get back into the squad? How can he get back in the team? All these players that we do have at centre back specifically are all very young. Yeah, he has to be good enough. He yeah. has to be better than them. That's that's the way. Um, all right. Well, that is your Tottenham update. Let me know in the comments section below your thoughts regarding all of those matters.